I was not going to make a video about this, but uh, I'll do it anyway since this is turning out to be such a nice uh, two night project. Uh, this is a Boston Acoustics uh, something or other, really small, tiny home theatre speaker that I found in the trash some time ago. It's a model A23. And uh, the moment I saw it, I figured I've got to make this into a portable speaker. And uh, <laughs> so I have done, I'm about 85% finished, so I've uh, got one of these uh, cheapo amplifier boards, TA2024 based off of eBay, uh, it was left over from a different project, and I've uh, modified one of the channels, removed the ridiculous uh, misspelled Chinese audio file uh, capacitor, and added a much smaller, I believe it's 33 Pico, or 33 Nano, series capacitor in order to access a bit of a high pass filter so that I can run this uh, bi amped one uh, amplifier paying the little tiny woofer which uh, isn't so tiny actually it's very massive for its size and the other one pairing the tweeter uh, I'm still going to be using the internal uh, filter since it's a fairly high quality filter as you can see lots of components fairly sharp curves and it's all done I don't have to do any calculations for it but uh, this cap, cap is just to take the edge it cuts it around 100 hertz or so so that the tweeter isn't going to be clipping if a large bass hits since this isn't a very painful uh, amplifier board and uh, up here I've just drilled three holes they're a bit crude still and I've uh, just screwed a volume potentiometer into the actual MDF, made a very tight hole. I've press fit an LED there, and I've actually properly attached a little power switch there. And uh, I've got a D shell laptop battery, it's a 6 cell uh, 11.1 volt uh, battery uh, with uh, the original. Protection circuitry, if you saw my solar video some time ago, it was that particular battery. I've modified it from being a long uh, 2x3 battery to the fat version, and it's just going to be sitting squeezed in with this uh, uh, wool that came stuck with the speaker and I can't fit all of it back in. It's just going to be squeezed up here along the side. The amplifier board is going to be sitting screwed in down there, and uh, the uh, filter is going to just sit where it's supposed to be, and also got a charging plug there. Uh, amusingly, uh, since since I modified this filter for the amplifier to for the speaker to be bi amplified, it turned out the woofer connection actually ended up being parallel with these. So if I want to, I can just connect another speaker up there and get a bit of extra sound, still mono of course there's also, uh, I'm not going to be able to shoot, but there's a mono mixing board uh, in there and uh, this input wire is just coming out of the port I did that intentionally because I want to uh, have just a fairly loose uh, cable that isn't going to break easily and I also didn't want to use a connector since that means you're never going to have a cable with you yeah, you'll never lose the cable this way. And also you might be able to tuck some of it into the part where it's a fairly thick and heavy duty cable and a very small part, so we'll see about that. Uh, and uh, that's about it, I've got to try and assemble everything. It, in theory it should fit. Uh, the amplifier board is basically rubbing against the magnet of the speaker when it's sitting inside and the speaker is also going to be holding the battery up, pressed up against the side so it's not going to move too much uh, really the entire thing is uh, intended to be kind of flexible and not uh, set in stone because uh, I can't take this box apart without ruining it and uh, yeah it's just impossible to attach anything properly anyway I've got to put everything together I'm setting up for a fun final test before assembly still got to strip the battery wires which are around there somewhere and if you come up to the battery connector just two screw terminals there and we should be getting some music alright so I've hooked up the battery and the speakers and there should be some signal going into it so let's give it a go see if it 
Okay, it's up in flames. Well, we've got a green LED. And I would say that's a success as far as the circuit is concerned. In fact, this potentiometer is actually a linear one that I put resistor across you know, between ground and the middle pin, and that gives you a fairly nice logarithm to it. So, I've just got to battle the mechanics. In theory, um, this should go together. In theory. And here's the final view of the insides prior to it being closed up forever. There's the amplifier board there. It actually, uh, there's this little card ledge here uh, that actually only almost goes to the edge. So the board is anchored underneath it, and the screw is pressing it uh, down and towards uh, that direction. So it sits very snugly in there. There's the battery package. It also ended up very slightly pushing against the PCB there. So it's actually very sturdily in place. And this is the woofer connection, so I should be able to squeeze everything in now. And there we go. I actually had to cut out some of the foam around the battery in order to make it fit at all. And even when after doing that, it made some rather worrying cracking noises when I actually screwed the woofer in the last couple of millimeters. And this is one of the coils on the amplifier board was bent a bit out of shape, but it doesn't make any horrible noises when I turn it off, so I really got my fingers crossed that I didn't kill a channel on the board. Shouldn't be a fire hazard with a battery, I wrap the magnets in some electrical tape, so here comes the moment of truth. Well, you, my dear viewer, have been denied the privilege of hearing the original audio for this video, since I, as a video producer, have committed a rather deadly sin, which is the sin of accidentally using a copyrighted song in my public domain video. And rather than sucking up to the recording label people and uh, allowing them to produce their advertising in my video, I've stuck to my morals and just replaced the audio with what you're hearing right now. The speaker is of course working just fine. It has a bit of distortion in it, which is due to the voice call rubbing a bit, which is probably the reason why the speaker was tossed in the trash to begin with. The song you're listening to is called Danse Macabre by Catapult, and it's one which I've verified several times to be released to the public domain. So if anyone dares to make a copyright claim on this <laughs> clip, I'm going to file a counterclaim. Anyway, now back to the regularly scheduled programming. And it's a part again. Uh, after playing it for a little bit, I noticed that there was a major issue with the gain of the entire system. At a maximum volume, uh, when connected to a normal computer media player, it would just uh, basically produce slightly louder than normal conversation uh, sounds. And I thought about it for a moment, and then I realized that uh, I used uh, two 4K7 resistors to do the mono down mixing. Uh, and I used a 1K resistor to do the logarithmic thing on the potentiometer. So, with that, we've basically got a 5 to 1 reduction in gain uh, right, right at the volume control since you've got a 5K input impedance and a 1K resistor to ground uh, at all times. So, 
There were way, a number of ways to solve this. Uh, one would be to take out the potentiometer and remove the resistor, which uh, would be a major project, since it's, uh, well, all the way up there somewhere, with the battery and the amplifier and everything in the way. Uh, the second option was to take out the amplifier board and uh, change around the input gain resistors on that, which uh, uh, would probably do a decent job, but I'd risk uh, raising my noise floor and the, I've noted this amplifier performs very poorly as it is it's got lots of really nasty distortion when it's playing uh, low levels of sound in particular and the third way to fix it would be to redo the dividers on the mono down mixing board and indeed that's what I opted to do the mono down mixing board is uh, that little hunk of tape right down there and it's just connected to the input cable and it's zip tied to the port there you can see the zip tie so I just had to cut these two zip ties and I just uh, put two 360 ohm resistors in parallel with the old 4K7 ones so that we get a um, we still have a bit of loss but it's nowhere near as bad it comes up the cost of putting a slightly high load on the uh, thing feeding this thing because uh, hey, 360, 350 ohm, somewhere around that uh, you know that that's almost down to headphone territory so it's going to eat away a bit of the battery time of whatever device you're trying to drive this thing with but hey, it's not worth the effort to try and do it properly by changing the potentiometer around Another thing I noticed when I took it apart was just how sturdily the battery is mounted because it's actually rock solid in there squeezed between the top of the cabinet, the pot and the PCB down here so that turned out very good and I still don't know what uh, made the, the bad snapping noise when I screwed the speaker in last time uh, but uh, you can see that coil right in the center of the frame there got a bit bent out of shape but uh, that isn't going to do any difference at all it's just at a bit of an angle now uh, I've also noticed that the tolerances between this board and the speaker are indeed very very tight uh, from factory because the speaker uh, basically takes up all of the cabinet so any cables running across here needs to be very carefully rated and I've see, see that they've derated themselves a bit now I had everything apart so I've got to clean that up and then put the thing back together and enjoy proper volume there we go, that should just about do it turn it down, I think you can hear the horrible distortion it makes it low volume, just listen At this stage in the video, I make an erroneous assumption as to the cause of the distortion of the heard of the speaker to be the cause of the cheapo amplifier board not performing properly due to the relatively high input impedance which was fed to it earlier. This is not the case, the only source of distortion in the speaker, aside from copyrighted music, is the voice call rubbing. I have since tried to correct it, this is being recorded over a month after the initial video was shot, and I only managed to make it slightly worse, which is why I'm making another speaker which is going to be published in a video shortly. Anyway, take care, cheerio. Thank you for watching, cheerio.